from God our Creator and the love at our beginning and without end in our midst and with us. God is with us. Here we find new life. May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. May the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and the light of your church. Open our our hearts here to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day as we gather around Jesus in word and in sacrament. Uh, Holy Communion is celebrated today. All who come seeking Jesus are welcome at the Lord's table. Come with your family uh, or, uh, and you will receive bread gluten-free or regular, and uh, wine or white grape juice. Special welcome to our guests and those who worship with us via the live stream. Uh, delighted that you have chosen to spend some time with us this week. Today we hear Jesus' warning that where your treasure is, there you will find your heart. And theologians have later said, there you will find your God. Um, we will include the blessing of health kits and school kits in the sending. That's not in the bulletin, so right after communion, uh, we'll bless uh, the ministry of uh, those health kits and school kits that have been made by members of the congregation, and they will be sent off from here as signs of God's love uh, to the world uh, this afternoon. Well, how about the kids of the kingdom? Uh, are they here? Anybody want to uh, Deacon, do you want to come? Come? Come up, you guys want to come? See what's in the Pastor C's box today?
What do you think this is? It's a box. It's a box. What do you think you keep in a box that looks like this? You don't know? Deacon, what do you think is in this box? Give me an idea. What does it look like? Who has boxes like this in the movies? Pirates. What do pirates have in their boxes? Treasures. Oh, look at that. Somebody's treasure cobbler belt. Somebody's got a key to the to the what? Maybe to the castle. Um, somebody's got a really fancy blue cufflink. Somebody's got some pearls. Uh, you think these are real treasures? Do you? Deacon, do you think these are all real treasures? I'm going to disappoint you. These are not real treasures. <laughs> They're plastic. And these cufflinks on the back of the box, it was $4 from Lewis Drug, is what the box said when I inherited it from my great uncle. So I don't have any real treasures. Because that's not where I put my heart. That's not where, where I want to invest my time and energy. Because these things will just get lost or disappear or we can't take them with us. They're not good for anything unless you give them away, sell them, and give some money. One time when I was about your age, I took my watch to, to um, kindergarten at church. And it was a gift from my grandma, and I lost it. And I never got that watch back. I don't know what ever happened to it. So sometimes when you have treasures that you get really you care about, they, they disappear, and then they're all gone. But what we do keep that is our real treasure is the love that we have for each other and the love that God has for us. So always remember that the treasure that's worth having is the love that your mom and dad and grandparents and God has for you. So I'll give you a treasure chest that you can color when you're in church. And you want to bring one to your you want to bring one to your brother? Natalie, you want one? Not so sure. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. Genesis 15, 1 through 6. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer or Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Praise to Christ the Word. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 33, 12 through 22. Bless the land whose God is the Lord, the heirs whom God has chosen. The Lord looks down and sees our humankind. From heaven, God surveys all people on earth. The maker of human hearts knows every human act. Our enemies do not save kings. Brute force does not spare soldiers. The war of ours is a sham. Its power it will not save. God keeps a loving eye on all who believe, on those who count on God, to bring relief 
from famine, to rescue them from death. With all we are, we wait for God, the Lord our God, and trust you. Our hearts find joy in the Lord. We trust God's holy name. Love us, Lord. We wait for you. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Our second reading, Abraham's faith, comes from Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, and 8 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised. As in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. <coughs> Therefore, from one person and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners of the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Praise to Christ the word. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able to welcome the gospel and repeat after me. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action. Have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they might open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night, nor near dawn, and finds them so, blessed are those. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, we had a great night at the Twins game. Those of you that didn't join us, um, the Twins did win, but it was Norman's first ball game, and that kind of made it all worth it. So. <laughs> In my carpool vehicle, we were crossing the Mississippi, uh, and as we were doing that, we got to talk about the bridges. 
Hennepin Bridge, looking at the road construction on the 3rd Avenue Bridge, which reminded us of the bridge collapse in 2007, I think, um, and all the road construction that was on that. We'd already been detoured, and um, then we remembered that it was actually that week, the first week in August, that the third at the, the um, freeway bridge fell. And then we got to talk about the Star Arch Bridge and the 10th Avenue Bridge. Um, but that bridge that fell reminded me of this text, or this text reminded me of it as well, that, you know, you never know the hour your life is, is needed. Um, or a lot of survivor's guilt. A lot of people that had driven over their bridge and didn't know why they had been not on it when it fell. My colleague uh, had been on it just that day. It was my day off. I was at Home Depot, and they kept driving the orange Home Depot carts out and blocking the freeway ramp with it. And I could not figure out what was going on until I heard the staff talking about that the traffic was all backed up. That 35W bridge was one-eighth or one-half mile of my four-mile commute to work every day. Um, it was a big shock. And then everyone came. Katie Couric and Charlie and Anderson Cooper and Brian. And remember, uh, we kept the media attention for about a whole week until they got distracted by some disaster in Utah or something. And they had to go off to run to chase after the next leading story. So we had to carry on, those of us who survived the bridge collapse, who weren't, who used it every day, who weren't happy to be the ones that were on it. We had to carry on with no bridge over troubled waters, with those who needed healing, with those who were grieving, with our survivor's guilt, why them, why not me, with our trust and bridges shaken. That was a interstate bridge and our trust in the authorities and the engineers and the government leaders shaken with our relief and our wondering and our remembering and now months and months of a detour around the detour although they built that bridge incredibly fast now those of you who live on Hudson or the other side of Hudson have your own detour as you have to await the work on your river crossing um, or your dikes or your flood control. All of which gets me thinking about bridges on a theological level. Here again the word of the Lord that speaks to us today in this text. Do not be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. Do not be afraid, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The children of Abraham, of Sarah, is 90, will be numbered like the stars in the heavens. Look forward to the city that has foundations that are solid, whose architect and builder is God. Look for the people that are seeking a homeland, a better country. God has prepared a city for them. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. In the end, the master will have them all sit down to eat, and he will serve them. When chaos threatens, when disaster occurs, when unforeseen tragedy breaks in, when senseless disease cripples, when death draws near, the bottom drops out of the economy or our jobs or our farm. The person of faith cries out, why God? The person of faith cries out, where are you God? Where are you in this? And of course, we say here that our God is on the cross. On the cross is where we see graphic witness that Jesus is with us in our suffering and in our dying and in our search to make sense of what seems senseless. God nowhere promises a life free from suffering. We know that because we see that even God 
God suffers. That not even God can escape that. But God's promise is that God will always be with us. Nothing more. Just that God will always be with us. And that's enough. That God is always with us means that God is with us in our suffering, together with us, when our world is shaken, when the foundations of the cities and the towns of our making all fail us, with us when we are filled with fear. What will come next? Do not be afraid, Abram, I'm your shield. Do not be afraid, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Once upon a time there was a kingdom where a great bridge connected the castle on one side of a great chasm to the city on the other side. But the townspeople refused to care for the bridge. They connected them with the castle. And one day without warning, that old bridge collapsed. Once the bridge fell, the lord of the kingdom who loved his people and who missed their visits to the castle. And the people who loved their master then were sorry that they had argued and had neglected the bridge. But they couldn't rebuild the bridge themselves across that big chasm to their lord. They didn't have the resources or the know-how. They had no architect, no builder with the skill to build so great a bridge. They had no materials. But unknown to them, across the great divide, there in the castle, the lord of the kingdom, missing his beloved people, his, their visits to him, decided to rebuild the bridge, even though they had let the first one fall into ruin. But the lord determined this time to make the bridge of something more durable. He decided he would build it of human flesh and bone. His son, the prince, the heir to the kingdom, volunteered. And his body, together with some heavy wooden timbers, cross bracing, as it were, would span that divide between the king and his people once and for all. The architect and builder, of course, is God. The bridge from God to us is Jesus Christ crucified. This bridge is our access to the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Little flock. And now children cross this bridge numbered like the stars in the heaven. Its capacity is so great. In a story that Matthew tells us, Jesus asked to see a coin in response to a question from a Pharisee, a coin that bears the image of Caesar the emperor with an inscription that refers to Tiberius as Divas, the divine one, and as Pontifex, Pontifex Maximus, the supreme bridge builder. It says right on the coin, it says Caesar the emperor is the supreme bridge builder. The son of the divine Augustus Caesar. That coin represents the emperor's assertion in the empire that he is the bridge between God and humanity. That Christ has to see that coin to make the point that Christ crucified is in fact that bridge. And just as at the table he is for us both host and guest, Jesus is both bridge and bridge builder for us. He is Pontifex Maximus, the supreme bridge builder, and the ponds, the pontoon bridge. Jesus Christ is the ponta, the large, flat pontoon rescue bridge that crosses Edward Barrier, that divides us one from another, that divides us from God, the cross and the resurrection that God it's in the cross and resurrection that God builds a new bridge over every division, over every fear, over every loss and loneliness, <coughs> over every barrier to abundant life. Jesus Christ is the bridge between the old and the new covenant, between God and humanity. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Go 
those who are seeking a homeland, a better country, a city that God has prepared for them. Luther once said in response to a question, anyone who wants to find Christ must first find the church. In other words, there's no such thing as freelance Christians. Luther continues, how can you know where Christ is and where faith in him is unless he knew where his believers are? Whoever wishes to know something about Christ must not trust himself, nor by the help of his own reason build a bridge of his own to heaven. He must go to the church and visit and make inquiry with those who follow Christ. He says, the church is not wood and stone, but the company of the people who believe in Christ. The seeker must keep company with them and see how they believe and teach and live. And their church is where we find our mission of opening doors to those seekers, of building bridges across great chasms that divide people and nations and seekers from God. It's not only Jesus Christ who is bridge and bridge builder. To be bridge builder also describes the body of Christ. The text says today, be ready. Have your lamps lit. They will meet Christ in you. Be dressed for action. Gird your loins. Sell your goods. Give generously to those in need. Don your traveling duds. Keep the porch light on and stay by the door. Secure what you treasure, knowing that its hiding place will also be the, your heart's home. Our mission with Jesus is to be God's pontiffs, bridge builders, building bridges, crossing barriers, rescuing all who suffer and want or need, reaching out to any in search of God, in search of meaning, in search of rescue, in search of community, in search of abundant life. And there's that baptismal image in there. The children of Abraham, numbered like the stars of the heavens, marked with the cross of Christ forever, where it all ends, where it all begins, in the water, in the blood, in the drowning, in the birthing, in the cleansing, in the quenching, not on the bridge, but now down by the riverside dying and rising. So do not be afraid, little flock, to go down onto the waters. For it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's the Father's good pleasure to welcome you home to the city that God has prepared for you, to your homeland, for God to adopt you in, to give you all that he has. I once heard an Episcopal bishop at a conference tell this story. There was once a small village that was destined to remain small because it grew up on the wrong side of the river. I don't know, maybe that's Henderson, I don't know. <laughs> the road to the major city in the region passed by this village on the other side of the river. It was costly for the villagers to get their goods to market and to go and buy supplies. But there was a merchant in the village who decided to build a bridge over the river for greater access to the city. This one merchant built this bridge from his own pocket. He would benefit from it, but so would the whole village. He would make it a public, not a private bridge. It would be used by all, free to all, In shorthand, it was a public work at great private cost. Paul uses the word liturgy, the work of the people, to describe public works done at great private cost. That's all liturgy is. That's all our prayer each year, each week here for the sake of the world is. A private, a public work for the sake of the whole world that we do with health kits, school kits, food pantry donations, and our offerings, and our prayer. It's all our private, all of our public work done at our private cost. And of course, Jesus is the ultimate liturgy, the ultimate public work at great private cost, the cost of his very life. 
as Christ's hands and feet in this place, as the body of Christ at work in the world now, our bridge building continues, our public work at great private cost, our liturgy, our work as a baptizing community, as a caring community, as a serving community, reaching out with God gifts for all, our work as a missionary outpost here in this corner of the kingdom of God. You've all seen this bridge building at work through the sacrament of holy baptism. You've seen people grafted into the kingdom of God, all those seeking a homeland, a better country, or those infants who knew that God could give their children a better future than they could. God builds a bridge to them. Jesus Christ reaches out again and again to rescue people from drowning waters. Jesus bridges the chasm between us, them, and God. Jesus invites us to his table, and he has them sit down to eat. And they will find a place at the table beside us, and where he will serve with his very own body and blood. And when the text said the master will have them sit down to eat, he will serve them. So do not be afraid, little flock. Jesus first invited us to his table. He keeps inviting and reminding us that there's room enough for all. And those newcomers and those unlikely guests will in turn join us as bridge builders. Join us in our bridge building and our rescue efforts, all for the sake of the world. They will join us in witnessing to Jesus Christ in our missionary outpost activities, welcoming others to the waters of baptism. Fear to the flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. You probably know this one, right? We'll do the first and then the last answers. Have no fear, little flock. Have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock. Thankful hearts, praise to God. Thankful hearts, praise to God. For he stays close beside you in all things, works with you. Thankful hearts, praise to God. Let us together proclaim the faith that we share. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation. Hear our prayer, O God of grace. Your mercy endures forever. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. 
in places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Hear our prayer, O God of grace. Your mercy endures forever. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and your shield. In places torn by strife and violence, raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Hear our prayer, O God of grace. Your mercy endures forever. Let your loving kindness be upon all people in need. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Look, console those who grieve, and embrace those who cry out to you. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid, and care for those who suffer, especially healing for Linda. Hear our prayer, O God of grace. Your mercy endures forever. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Hear our prayer, O God of grace. Your mercy endures forever. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting our others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. We long to store away in chests those things we think we need. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path to life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Hear our prayer, O God of grace. Forever. Receive all these our prayers, merciful God, and dwell on us richly through Jesus Christ and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also with you. Greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Thanksgiving, um, we'll just speak the holy, 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 holy. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. So with the people of every race and nation, tribe and language, with the whole church on earth and the saints and angels of heaven, joyfully we give you thanks and speak the holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. God, you are our maker, our redeemer, our healer, our bridge builder, and our bridge, our host and our guest. And when you created the world, it was harmonious, and the plants and animals and the seas and the stars were whole and well in your praise. But we went our own way, and our sin scarred the world, and then you sent your son to 
heal our ills, and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We remember, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, his victory over death. We await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river, will be able to cross over like the stars of the heaven and be gathered into Christ's heavenly home. So we pray this day over this meal that you would send your spirit upon us, that as grains as wheat scattered in the hillside become one bread, we might be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with your Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as Christ taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. Come, share in these good gifts.
pray together. Most loving God, creator and redeemer, we give you thanks for this foretaste of your glory. Through Christ and the Father of saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the servant, our friend and brother. Amen. Appeared here are some samples of our school kits and health kits. Together, uh, we have made 302 school kits. The number was changing as they were getting wrapped up. So uh, 302 school kits and 48 health kits. Uh, Jake and Barbara are gonna take these to Lutheran World Relief this afternoon. Uh, this work has been done by Beatrice and Kathy Kessler made the uh, tap sacks. Not those. Not those, but even better ones than these. These are the ones you buy that come from China or somewhere. Um, and we have donations from everyone. And then Bonnie and Cindy pack them up. And um, anybody else? Who did I leave out? That's the problem when I start doing names with other people out. So these will go out from here as signs of Christ's love to those who are in need, uh, need health kits and disasters or need school kits because uh, of their uh, poverty. So uh, let us um, give thanks for these as we send them out. Uh, you join in prayer. God of earthquake, wind, fire, and flood, God of the rich and the poor alike, may those who suffer in disaster find refuge in you. May those who suffer in poverty find riches and treasure <coughs> in you and relief from your church. Help them in their distress to trust in your mercy, which never ends. Strengthen them to face all the challenges before them. Make these kits that we offer today as they go out as signs of your love contribute to this work, that all, may, all who receive these kits may sense your loving kindness and find their hope renewed. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know this one? It's it's the
invite you to sign up for summer and autumn ministries, I guess, um, for worship leadership, as well as for VBS work. And uh, we need to know if you're coming and if you're helping, and we expect everyone to be here. We'll have some kind of activity for the um, adults, including crafts. So we don't know what you're going to get into. So we're looking for seeing you, and we're cooking it up right now. Thanks for Jake, to Jake and Barbara for coordinating the Twins game. We had great fun, and we'll share more pictures of that next week. And um, one question I have for you: Do um, do you like the Benedicite Minnesota, the blessing of all the animals in Minnesota? Should we keep doing that for the rest of? Uh, August for the rest of the summer? Okay. Are you tired of it? No. Okay. Everybody says sure, so. All right, then. Uh, any other announcements that we need uh, for the week? Go then to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.